short break, Abigail. Not as short as my term. It's okay. It's a relatively short one. We've already had a lot of talking for our Shabbat because of the joy of the Bar Mitzvah. And it's one that starts off also with a story, as all good sermons do, except for those that don't. There were four rabbis, Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah, Rabbi Yoshua, and Rabbi Akiva. And these four were traveling through the hills outside Jerusalem, and they came up to Mount Scopus, where you can still view the old city of Jerusalem to this day. But of course, in the year that they were walking, which would have been around the 130s, the temple was in ruins. The city had been long ago conquered by the Romans, the temple laid waste, and it was a tragic sight. And so they did what Halakha said to do in those days, they tore their clothes upon seeing this catastrophe, even though it was almost 70 years old at that time, as it was laid out in front of them. And three of the rabbis, Rabbi Gamaliel, Rabbi Elisar, Rabbi Nazari, and Rabbi Yoshua, began to weep uncontrollably. And Rabbi Akiva began to laugh. All right, one of these things is not like the other. They turn to him and say, why are you laughing? And he turned to them and said, why are you crying? And they said, why are we crying? Because here we see the Holy of Holies lay bare, exposed to the world, a place that was so sacred that even we were not allowed to ever enter. Only the Kohen Gadol, only once a year could step foot in there. And now we can see wild animals running around on the Temple Mount, coming and going freely through this most sacred place on earth. Why are you laughing? He said, why am I laughing? He says, look, I have long been puzzled by a phrase from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah says that the prophet Uriah, who's considered to be the same as the prophet Micah, and the prophet Zechariah, Zechariah, their prophecies will come. Now this makes no sense. Because one was a first temple prophet, one was a second temple prophet. How can you tell me their two prophecies are together? But I believe that what Isaiah was saying was that the two prophecies were dependent. That is to say, the first prophecy, the second prophecy, the prophet of Zechariah, was dependent upon the fulfillment of the first prophet, the prophet Uriah, the prophet Micah. Because it says in Micah, Zion, you will be plowed as a wasteland. You will be plowed under. Which, of course, is a horrible tragedy. But the prophet Zechariah says, there will again be old folks in the streets of Jerusalem. There's that old folks motif again. Until I saw the temple in this state with my own eyes, until I saw that indeed the first prophecy had come true, that indeed Zion had been plowed under, that we had reached that level, of degradation and destruction. I did not know if I could believe in the second prophecy. I did not know if I could believe in the prophecy of hope, the prophecy of redemption, the prophecy of restoration. And now that I see that indeed the prophecy of Micah has come true, now I believe the prophecy of Zechariah will also come true. And the other three rabbis turned to him and said, you have comforted us. You have comforted us. He reminded them in the depths of their despair that God had not only promised that there would be these moments of despair, but that there would be a moment of recovery, there would be a moment of redemption. There was only one problem, and that was that Rabbi Akiva went out and acted as though he believed that that moment of Zechariah, of, of Zechariah, was then, that day, that year. He found a gentleman by the name of Barcosma. And Bartolfo was a strong and valiant man who Rabbi Akiva believed was Mashiach, was the Messiah, who would lead us to military victory over the Romans, and who Rabbi Akiva supported wholeheartedly and up until his own death at the hands of the Romans. But as you probably have noticed, our world is not redeemed. And Rabbi Akiva and all of those who rebelled against Rome died in horrible ways. And in fact, the destruction that came after the Bar Kokhba revolt was worse than the destruction that came 
of the Second Temple by the Romans in the year 70. It was during the, the repercussions of the Barcopa Revolt that our people were exiled in huge numbers from the land of Israel, the beginning of what we call the Diaspora of today. It was during that time that hundreds of thousands of Jews were taken away in captivity and sold as slaves and glut on the market, making Jews the cheapest slaves you could buy who were so plentiful. It was at that time that our ability to truly live on the land of Israel well began to erode further and further until only a tiny percentage of us would remain on that land until the reestablishment of the state of Israel. Rabbi Akiva believed redemption was around the corner, and he believed it so strongly he paid the price. This is the double-edged sword of the prophecies that we have been given. There are those who quickly leap to say, this is the end of all, this is the apocalypse, this is Armageddon, this is where the world is finally going to be thrown over, plowed, if you will, and made anew. And there are those who believe, no, this is the beginning of the redemption. The beginning of salvation, it is just around the corner. Our tradition has, for 2,000 years, said no to both. You do not proclaim that this is the apocalypse. You do not try to calculate the end of days. You do not try to decide when Armageddon is about to occur. You do not look for signs and symbols and portents and omens and all of those other things to try and convince yourself that this is the end. Because the Jews so believes to despair, to discretion, and great pain and loss. But equally, you do not try to figure out when is redemption, when is the Messiah going to be here, when are we going to have this full uplift where the world will be made perfect and whole, as if by a miracle. Don't try and figure that out either. It'll happen one day, maybe tomorrow, God willing, maybe a thousand years from now, God willing. What matters, says our tradition, is what you do with this day, right here, right now. And this day is not dependent upon what tomorrow will bring. If tomorrow will bring the apocalypse, so be it. We will deal with it when it comes tomorrow, and we will get through it, as the prophecies have said. If tomorrow brings redemption, so be it, and we will gladly greet it and get through that time period where we transform this world into the paradise it is meant to be. So be it. But today? Today is neither the apocalypse, nor is today the coming of the Mashiach. At least, not yet. Today's not done. Although there is a tradition the Mashiach will not arrive on a Shabbat, so it's not to spoil it for us. <laughs> today is today. Our rabbis further taught that if you are planting a tree, and someone runs and says, Mashiach has arrived. You finish planting your tree. And then you go to greet the Messiah. Because the needs of this world, the day-to-day -day good that we do, the planting of trees, the treating of the sick, the helping of the hungry, the clothing of the naked, the sheltering of the homeless, the love that we give just to our families day in and day out, that takes precedence over even greeting the Messiah. Because when the Messiah comes, we will still need all of those things. When the apocalypse comes, if it ever comes in the way people imagine, we will still need all those things. And God knows today, we need all the goodness we can give for today. So do not try to figure out what this all means, about what the long-term plan is, about what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, three weeks, four months. Do what is right today. Make your choice in the way our people have made our choices for 3,000 years. Use the guidance and the wisdom that God has given us through the Torah and our tradition to do what is right for today, for you, your family, your community, your country, your world. And tomorrow will be better if you have done that today. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Now you have to work.